The incident you've just witnessed was described by the police and the press as an accident. Which, of course, it wasn't just as sure as my name is Boris Carlo. We're concerned now with some of the people who live in the small resort town where the accident took place several weeks ago. We're going to see these people through the eyes of a murderer at large. Unidentified, unsuspected, unpredictable as the urge to kill again becomes irresistible. The name of our story is The Watcher, and our principal players are Mr. Martin Gable, Miss Olive Sturgis, Mr. Richard Chamberlain, Mr. Stuart Irwin, Miss Gloria Clark, Miss Irene Hervey, and Mr. Alan Baxter. Take my word for it. This is a thriller. Thank you. 
Nice evening, Miss Tomlinson. Yes, it is, Mr. Brightside. Mrs. Appleby is in a rare voice tonight. Good to have you home again. Feeling better? Yes, thank you. Susan was a lovely girl, and so young to be taken. What? What? Why? Great grief is a divine and terrible radiance which transfigures the wretched. The burden of your grief can be shared. Please call on me if I can help. Oh, you're very considerate. But I'll be all right. Somebody's got to take care of this place. She's a widow, and these boats in her house are all she's got. Yes, but most boys your age would rather be out roaming the streets. You're to be commended, Larry. Believe me. I'm a teacher. I know something about boys. I know how they squander their time. You want something, Mr. Freitag? I make you nervous watching you work. Nobody makes me nervous. How old are you, Larry? Twenty. Graduate from high school? Sure. Plan to continue your education? Go on to college? I hadn't given it much thought. You were seeing quite a lot of Miss Tomlinson's young sister before she was drowned. Susie used to hang around here a lot, if that's what you mean, but I, I wasn't dating her. Well, she was a nice kid, but she was always under what she... all the time pestering me. I know. Uh, I'd rather not talk about it, Mr. Freitag. Do you mind? I suppose a good-looking young man like you doesn't have any trouble finding feminine companionship. I hadn't thought much about it. Must be a problem for you. I mean, avoiding unwelcome attentions. I can take care of myself. I'm sorry, Larry. I, I didn't mean to pry. I'd really like to help you. Thanks, but I'm doing all right. An older man can sometimes help keep a boy straight. Life is full of dark paths. It's so easy at your age to lose the way. Many temptations come our way. But if we refuse to learn from our mistakes, if we make them a way of life... You sound just like my Aunt Eunice. I'm trying to be your friend, Larry. Look, Mr. Freitag, I I'm doing all right. If I ever need your advice, well, I know where I can find you. <laughs>
had hoped you'd help me with the arrangements for the garden party. There's a great deal to do before tomorrow night. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. It's time you assume some social responsibility, Beth. Why? You have enough for both of us. Don't be insolent, young lady. I'm sorry. You should be. You should also be sorry for the way you look. Oh, Beth, won't you even try? You have a closet full of dresses, and I never see you in anything but blue jeans. You're almost 21. It's time you started behaving like a lady. Oh, Mother, let's not have another scene. Where are you going? To Shirley. All right, run along. But we'll have a long talk tomorrow. It's a date. Hi, kitten. Uncle Florian, what are you doing out of bed? All right, let's have it. Hmm? You know what the doctor said. Give it to me. Ah, petticoat tyranny. Just because she gave you a bad time, you have to ruin my evening. That's right. We pettit women are a perverse lot. Amen to that. Ha <laughs> ha, you'd perish without us. <laughs> Got a date tonight? Gonna rain, you know. Let it. Larry? Mm-hmm. Hmm. What's our cover story? I'm at Shirley's. Any chance Shirley might phone you? Nope. Well, I'll answer all incoming calls anyway. Thanks, as usual. Beth, enjoy yourself. You probably saw those nets waving at you. Well, looks like we have soggy donuts with our job, huh? <laughs> you are a ninny. Gilly conscience, I guess. Oh, Larry, if my mother had any inkling, it'd kill her. Hey, we haven't said hello yet. Larry, it's doing something to me, sneaking off to meet you here and telling lies. How about it, huh? Yes. Well, I'll make it with the coffee department while I find some dry clothes. Do you remember that high school teacher I told you was running from Vita Tomlinson? He never told me about any teacher. Didn't I? No. Slipped my mind, I guess. Well, what about it? Well, his name's Freitag. He was questioning me tonight. About what? Oh, how old I am. Do I plan to go to college? Stuff like that. Well, he's a teacher. Maybe he likes you and wants to help. Oh, well, his help I can do without. He gives me the creeps. Well, then forget about him, darling. Think about us. What about us? Well, for a start, I love you. That's only the half of it. As soon as I find somebody to help Aunt Eunice, we're going to get married. Right? Right. 
this place together, right? Right. Okay. Tomorrow's my day off. And we're going on a picnic. To Rainbow Lake? To our... Larry. Favorite <laughs> spot. Larry. <laughs> oh, corrupt and faithless seed. How long shall I endure thy iniquity? <laughs> saw Opal Johnson shoot him. I mean, an unsolved murder. Oh. Must maybe he's talking about Susie Tomlinson. Now, you know the coroner ruled that an accident. I didn't buy that then. I don't buy it now. Look, you're hired to keep the peace, not to stir up more trouble. Bill, we try to solve crimes, not cover them up. This is a summer resort. The tourist trade here keeps the natives alive all winter. And no elected official is going to hand down a verdict that's going to scare off the tourists, especially if not a single shred of evidence. What about this? Some crank. Maybe. Maybe he's a murderer. Only a psycho could write a letter like this. Someone who reads his own corruption into everything he sees. Look, Al, if this letter's on the level, you got a sitting duck out there, and before you know it, he'll be a dead duck. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Of course not. All right. And why don't you let me nose around a little, ask a few questions, okay? All right, all right. Phil, keep this to yourself. No leak to the newspapers, no nothing, unless you're sure, okay? Edith. Oh, all right. Uh, Florian, see if Bess awake yet. Bet. Morning, kitten. Where are you rushing? Larry and I are going on a picnic. Your mother's going to be furious. That's news. Beth, your mother and I had a long talk last night after you left. I can guess who did the talking. She's heard rumors about you and Larry. She's thinking of packing you off to the city. She wouldn't. You know that she would. So take a tip from your old pal here and get home in time for this shindig tonight. I will, I promise. And I'll be the perfect junior hostess. Tell her for me. Get out of here before I tan your bottom. <laughs> Breakdown after she, after it happened. I'm not intruding, I hope. I saw the car outside. This is Mr. Archer, Mr. Freitag. He's come to talk about Susan. Oh, nothing wrong, I hope. Not a thing, Mr. Freitag. Well, I, I won't intrude. You know where to find me if I can be of any assistance. Thank you, but I'm already in your debt. Not at all. Not at all. Good day, sir. Miss Donaldson, I'm not here to hurt you any more than you've already been hurt. That sounds trite, doesn't it? Fact is, I'm reopening your sister's case. 
Why? Because I'm not satisfied with the coroner's verdict. Why aren't you satisfied? I've made some inquiries about Susan and her friends. Among other things, I learned that Susan was an excellent swimmer. Susan slipped and hit her head on the dock. She was unconscious when she fell into the water. You don't really believe that. I have no reason to disbelieve it. Why do you ask such a question? Mr. Tomlinson. Did Susan have any close friends that you were concerned about? Susan had lots of nice friends. I mean boyfriends. Just what are you suggesting? I understand you kept a pretty tight rein on her. Maybe that too tight? Young girl needs close supervision. And you gave her close supervision. Very close. And so, she reacted quite naturally. She rebelled. She had dates behind your back. It's not true. She spent quite a lot of time down at the boathouse with Larry Carter, for one. I don't wish to discuss it. Now, why do you suppose they're pestering that poor dear again? I don't know. Oh, it's uh, Tuesday again, I see. Well, you told me if I, if I worked weekends, I could have Tuesdays off. I'll not go back on my Christian word, you know that, but I do think you're seeing too much of that petted girl. Well, who I see and how often I see her is my business, Aunt Eunice. I've noticed a disturbing change in you lately, Larry. You've been keeping bad hours. There's been talk. Even Mr. Freitag has remarked about your behavior. Well, I figured he'd be meddling. Mr. Freitag is a nice religious man, and you'd do well to heed his example. Pity he's only here for the summer. Yeah, ain't that a shame. Now, don't be surly, young man. I'm not being surly. Perverseness. Was there ever so much perverseness in the world? I'd better be going. Larry. Yes, ma'am. I don't mean to be harsh. I want you to have friends and good, clean fun, but you do have a responsibility. With your uncle dead, you're a man of the house now. I depend on you. You understand that now, don't you? I understand. <laughs> came in. Special delivery. Go ahead. It was mailed last night or either early this morning. It's unsigned. It reads, I am now certain I must kill again.
something serious, I don't want to hear it. Everything's too beautiful. The sky has a fresh coat of blue just for us. We're making a big mistake, Beth. How? By not getting married right now. Oh, Larry, Well, I... why not? We could drive into the next state, get a license, and be married before morning. But what about my mother and your aunt? Tell her you're spending the night at Shirley. Shirley will cover for you. No. I won't start our life together with a lie. Well, it's a little late to be fussy, isn't it? Well, I hope it isn't too late, Larry. Because I've decided to tell my mother all about us. What we have is too precious to spoil with hiding and lies. I'm going to tell her everything. Have you gone soft in the head? She'll never let you marry a guy with no parents, no real family. Except an aunt who spends all her time singing hymns and telling everybody what a good Christian she well, is. I'll have to take that chance. That chance? It's the only way. What you're saying is no. Okay, it's no, and that's the end of it. I'll drive you back to town. Larry? Beth, what are we going to do? Wonderful, zany goof. I love you. I love you. Isn't that enough for now? Oh, it'll work out, honey. I don't know how, but it will. It will. It's funny. But I don't care much right now. Just as long as I don't lose you. Just you try and lose me. Be watching us. Oh, there's somebody up there. I feel it. I know it. Well, don't be silly. Let's go and find out. Cut it out, Beth. Okay, stubborn. Wait for me. I'll hit you right down the Kearney's garage and get it fixed. You can change while I'm gone. Well, I'm going with you. No, you'd only slow me down. But, Larry, I, I don't want to stay here alone. Well, I can't carry you and wheel the tire, too. Lock yourself in the car if you're scared. No, Larry, I... Look, do you want to get home on time? Then quit arguing. <laughs>
Ma, keep them youngins in the car. Your boy tells me he found a girl murdered. Yes, sir, she sure looks dead to me. Where is she? Up that trail yonder a ways. Y you see, we, we heard this horn a honking and went up there to see if we could help. And when we got up near the car, this man come out from under the hood, took one look at us and run off into the brush. Could you recognize him? No, but, but my wife here saw him tearing out towards town in this car. You know, he must have had it parked down the road a ways. I'm a police officer, miss. Are you hurt? No. Uh, I don't think so. What happened? Someone tried to kill me. Who? I don't know. A man. He... Larry left me, and, and I felt I was being watched. And... and... And then he was standing there. And... You're all right. <laughs> Cry it out. You can tell me all about it on the way into town. <laughs> your party, Mother. Your uncle and I have telephoned everybody. We've told them you had an automobile accident. That's all they need to ever know. But something's happened to Larry, and they won't tell me what. I'll drop back later to talk to your daughter, Mrs. Petting. Good night. Oh, officer. There's to be no talk about where my daughter was found. Sheriff Matthews and I have discussed it. Do you understand? Let's go and have a talk about what we're going to tell people. No, I'm going to Larry. Miss! Uncle Florian, can I borrow your car? You're staying here, and you're going to do exactly as I tell you. I'm sorry, Mother. Yes, your mother may be right. If the newspapers get a hold of this, you know how they'll slant the story. Daughter of a prominent socialite attacked by fiends. Can I borrow your car? Bess, you've got to listen to me. I'm going if I have to crawl. Oh, so it's finally come to the surface, has it? I know now what I've seen in you all summer, Bess. In spite of a fine home and a decent family, You've turned out to be nothing but a little tramp. Whatever I am, I have you to thank, Mother, for making me hide and tell lies. And worst of all, for making me feel ashamed of loving Larry. How dare you! <gasps> and thanks for that, too. Beth, wait. I I'll drive you. Somebody banged him. Then they pushed the down button. He'd have been crushed if that tire rim hadn't been laying there. Don't the rack go back up? No, it's frozen. That'll be cut through in a minute. Anybody see who did it? No, but it had to be the same weirdo that wrote those letters and tried to kill the pettit girl. 
and murdered Susie Tama. Well, there's a connection, that's for sure. How much longer, Sheriff? Uh, I'll be a few minutes yet, Doctor. You think you can revive him, Doctor? You'll have to wait with your questions. Until when? Until tonight, maybe. The uh, Portville Hospital is sending an ambulance. Uh, meanwhile, we'll take him to his home. How bad is that head injury? I can't tell till I see the x-rays. the young miss that started all this trouble. Out of charity, I take in a homeless boy, and suddenly my house is filled with policemen and tramps. Now, just a minute. It's all right, Uncle Florian. I'm getting used to that name now. Well, listen to her. She actually flaunts the fact. Where's Larry? Upstairs in his room. But you're not going up there. Don't try to stop me, Mrs. Appleby. Unless you want a scene, your neighbors will never forget. Oh, Beth, I'd better get back to your mother and try to square things for both of us. Phone me when you're ready to come home. such a fright. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Appleby. Why didn't you come in the front way? There's a policeman outside. I was afraid he wouldn't let anybody in the house. And I was concerned for you. Oh, how kind you are. Only the other day I was telling Miss Tomlinson how you've been taking an interest in Larry. I yeah. saw them bringing Larry home. What happened, Mrs. Appleby? You haven't heard. No, I just returned from Portville. Oh, it's all over town, Mr. Freitag. The shame of it. How I'm ever going to live down the shame. 
some fiend attacked Larry at the gas station and the girl he was out in the woods with, alone. She's upstairs with him now, the brazen little baggage. Even threatened to create a scene if I tried to stop her. After all I've done to that boy, this is the way he repays me. Have either of them been able to say who attacked them? No, but uh, the sheriff told me the girl will probably remember what the fiend looked like when she gets over her shock. I see. Well, uh, you'll have to excuse me now, Mr. Freitag. Uh, the doctor's given me a prescription to get filled for Larry. You're leaving them up there alone? Oh, dear. Uh, would you, uh, could you possibly... Of course, I'd be glad to uh, stay here and chaperone them. Oh, oh, you're very considerate. All this trouble, if it didn't go contrary to my Christian beliefs, I'd wish the both of them dead. When night darkens the streets, then wander forth the sons of Belial. That's from Milton's Paradise Lost. Belial is the spirit of evil personified. One of the fallen angels. Yes. Uh, well, I won't be long. Nothing will ever come between us again. 